We should tell you, you can confirmed on its website. It is under federal investigation and received a federal grand jury subpoena on February 22nd. The two UCAN employees who complained of wrongdoing are Charles Langley, an analyst with UCAN, and David Peffer, an, an, an attorney with the Watchdog Agency. They join me in studio now. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Now, I want to let people at home know we're not going to get into the details of your allegations against uh, UCAN employees, and this involves higher senior management employees at UCAN because, of course, these are allegations. Uh, there has been no indictment at this point, but Charles, I want to begin with you and ask you, when you first went to the board to uh, report what you felt was uh, financial impropriety? I did it in, uh, I think, around April 6th. I, I sent some pretty extensive documents just documenting uh, various, uh, what, what I felt was inappropriate uh, activity at UCAN. It was a confidential internal complaint. And uh, now, David, you had sent a letter to the board as well around that time or a little bit before that. Yes, I sent a letter on March 4th, uh, 2010. A and I know we've been calling you whistleblowers, but this began as confidential complaints to the board. Right. Uh, you know, when you think of a whistleblower, you think of someone going public and blowing the whistle. We, we haven't done that. Essentially, you can blew the whistle on itself by, by posting an anonymous, oddly enough, press advisory last night. The advisory keeps changing. Um, our status as employees keeps changing, depending on when you check the advisory. And uh, we, we didn't go to the media. We didn't take this outside of the family. And we didn't ask for this. And we don't want UCAN to dissolve. We don't think it's appropriate for UCAN to dissolve at this time. So let's back up a little bit. You, you had concerns. You went to your board. You wrote them formal letters. Um, what did the board say to you? How did they respond? It took them a while to respond. Um, it took a couple of weeks. And when they did, it was very hopeful for us. They had retained what they said was a really well-known um, nonprofit attorney, and they said they were going to conduct a full forensic audit. That never happened. The audit never happened. And so then what happened? You, you went to a lawyer. Well, we, we waited. We waited patiently for some type of result uh, from this, this investigation. We're still waiting the results of what is essentially a secret investigation. And what's disturbing about this is UCAN is, is member funded. It's a 501c3 nonprofit that enjoys huge tax advantages. And in a sense, every US and California taxpayer owns a piece of UCAN. And they appear to have spent more than $100,000 conducting a secret investigation and then saying, well, everything's fine, everything's OK. Some of this is public money too, isn't it? Isn't there some PUC, Public Utilities uh, Commission money that gets funneled back into UCAN as well? Yeah, it's something called intervener compensation. When UCAN uh, prevails uh, in a rate decision with SDG&E or is deemed to have contributed some value to a rate hearing, a portion of our legal expenses are, are re reimbursed. It's called intervener income, and uh, it's a significant portion of UCAN's revenue. And that makes it public money. Now, David, I want to ask you, you're, you're, you're a lawyer, yes, I but am. you went to a lawyer when the board didn't hear your complaints. Is this to now sue the board, or was it, what is it that you asked your lawyer to do? I asked my lawyer to represent us in trying to push through the investigation and the reforms that we've been asking for. What we want is a clean, honest, transparent watchdog one that lives up to the ideals that so many people here believe UCAN stands for. Have you both been fired? It depends on what version of the uh, press advisory on the website you read. It, it has referred to former employees and then current staff, and it seems to change every couple of hours. Now, both of you were on this show last week. Mm -hmm. David, you were here to talk about SDG&E proposed rate hikes, mm -hmm. and Charles, you were here to talk about gas, gas prices. Mm -hmm. Now, one week later, this you, you were speaking on behalf of an agency that's supposed to represent the consumer. You're a watchdog mm -hmm. agency, and now mm -hmm. look, look what's happened now. One week later, how do you feel knowing that now you were representing a, 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 really an agency that, that obviously you have a lot of concerns about? 
This is devastating. It's something that's been going on in the background for quite a while, but we were always hopeful that we could change things, that we could make this agency something great. Um, and with the dissolution, that, that's, it's heartbreaking. I feel really distressed. We're asking really simple questions. How much money was there? Where did it go? How was it spent? In what accounts? And why are we suddenly out of money now? I attended a, a board meeting on December 15, 2011, or excuse, no, 2010, where Michael Shames announced that UCAN was financially healthy and viable. They were talking about buying a new building, that they had enough money to literally go for two years without a penny of fundraising. And fundraising is actually an important aspect of my job there. So it's very disturbing that when suddenly on the same day a grand jury subpoena is issued, the organization decides to dissolve rather than open up its books and say, honestly, this is what's happening. This is where the money went. Charles Langley, David Peffer, thank you for being here. KPBS reached out to UCAN board members, but they declined our request for an interview. UCAN CEO Michael Shames also declined to be interviewed, but did issue this statement. I'm not going anywhere, and SDG&E will need to put away that high-priced champagne for at least another five years or so before they begin popping any corks. And, of course, he's referring to UCAN's action against SDG&E. Also, on UCAN's website, a press advisory with the following comment. No evidence confirming such allegations was provided by those lodging allegations, nor discovered by any of the professionals retained by UCAN's board. And, of course, that was posted by Anonymous, and that is on UCAN's website.